Last week I explained how you create scenes and I updated a preset to have eight different scenes. This week we're going to look at blocks in the blocks library. You build presets and scenes by connecting blocks on the grid. Inputs start on the left and move to the right. There are currently 41 different block types available on the FX3. You can download the blocks guide for detailed information. I'll post a link in the description. Some of the more common ones are input, output, amp, cab, delay, drive, and reverb. Amazing to think that there are 34 other block types available. Most of the blocks have four channels. You can think of each channel as a storage spot. For example, the amp block has four channels, meaning that you can have four amps in the amp block. They can be four different amps, or four amps of the same type but with different settings, or a combination. For example, a 59 bass guy in channel A set to clean, another 59 bass guy set to crunch in channel B, a Friedman in channel C, and a Plexi 100W 1970 in channel D. There are some blocks that don't have four channels. The crossover block has two channels, the looper block has one, Megatap has two, multiplexer has six, and so on. There's a chart in the blocks guide that lists this information. You can also have multiple blocks of the same type. For example, you can have two amp blocks in a preset, amp one and amp two. Each block can hold up to four amps, meaning that you can use eight different amps in one preset. The same chart that I mentioned earlier lists the number of blocks of the same type that can be used in the preset. There are only a few block types that can't have multiple instances per preset. For example, you can only have one looper block, one ring mod block, one real-time analyzer block, one scene MIDI block, one tone match block, and one vocoder block. So there are 35 blocks that you can use more than one type of that block type impressive to say the least. Each of the four input blocks correspond with the four input jacks. In other words, the IN1 block is connected to the input 1 jack, the IN2 block is connected to the input 2 jack, and so on. The output blocks work the same way, with one difference. OUT1 sends signal to the output 1 jacks, but also to USB inputs 1 and 2 on a connected computer. OUT2 sends signal to the output 2 jacks and also to USB input 3 and 4 on a connected computer. Every input block contains a noise gate, and the noise gate has a number of different parameters that can be adjusted. Every output block contains a multi-channel mixer. There are six rows on the grid, and every row has its corresponding channel on the mixer. Every output block also contains eight scene level parameters, which you can use to boost or cut the level for any scene. Just about every block has a mix page with nine different parameters in total to adjust. Not all blocks contain all nine parameters, though. I think you're starting to see how incredibly flexible the FX3 is, and I have only touched on a few points about blocks. Let's look at the variety within the most used blocks. There are 289 different amps in the amp block. Now, I would guess that in my entire life I might have gone through like 20, 25 amps. To have 10 times more than that at my disposal, man, that's really a handful. There are 2,048 different cabs in the cab block, and that's just the factory cabs. You can store another 2,048 cabs that you got elsewhere. And then there are another 189 legacy cabinets from older models. There are 57 different drive models in the drive block, 21 different delays in the delay block, eight different Wawa's in the Wah block, and 54 different reverbs in the reverb block. And then there's the 16 different chorus pedals in the chorus block and the 13 different types of compressors in the comp block. <laughs> the list goes on and on. The one potential problem with all of these choices is your brain getting system overload trying to go through all the various options. I don't know about you, but back when I was gigging, I used one amp, one cab, a drive pedal, chorus, rotary, and delay four pedals and somehow I got by. But now with all of these choices, how do we know what works best for different circumstances? This is where the blocks library comes in and wow, what a lifesaver. Instead of writing down various pedal settings in a notebook, for example, you can save various pedals in each of the channels and then you can save that block for recall later on. Instead of trying to figure out which of the 2048 cabinets work best for you, 
you can save blocks of 16 different cabinets. Remember, each cab block channel can save four different cabinets, and there are four channels per cab block. Personally, I doubt that I would ever create more than a couple cab blocks. Yeah, but who knows? Having the capability to do this is mind-blowing. And you can save as many block combinations as you'd like because they get stored on your computer for use with Axe Edit. Then when you create a new preset or scene, you can recall any of these stored blocks. You don't have to try to remember what delay works best or which cab combination rocks your world. Just save your favorites and recall them later. Let's save a block of amps that you can recall later. I'll just pick four random amps right now to show you how easy this is. All right, let's get an amp block up here. And let's see here. Let's use number 70 in A. And let's use, uh, let's go with 140 in B. Let's go with two ten in C, and then let's go with two eighty in D. So we have the Captain Hook three A in channel A, the Friedman B E V one Fat in channel B. The Recto 1 Red in channel C, and the Vibrato Lux in channel D. Now I'll save this block by clicking on Library, clicking on the down arrow, and click Save. Eh, let's call this block Random Amps. Save the entire block, and hit Save. Now look, you can have blocks of different fenders, blocks of marshals, etc. You can have a block with four of your one favorite amp, all set differently. You can repeat this process for each block type, building up a powerful collection of blocks. Axe Edit keeps all of the blocks sorted internally. So when you go to the amp block and retrieve saved blocks, you will only get the amp blocks that you saved. The saved cab blocks won't show up in the amp block. So while you may have a hundred different blocks saved all together, you won't have to deal with all 100 of them at once. Now let's try out that saved amp block. Preset 390 currently has the two stone J35 in channel A. Click on the library block and click on random amps. And just like that, now, the Captain Hook 3A is in channel A. Now I could hit save at this point, but since this is a, just a test, I won't save the preset. Now let's build a quick preset from blocks that I had previously saved. Okay, you know, we'll go to quick build. We'll drop in one here, we'll drop out one over here. Now let's connect them. Okay, now let's drop in drive, Amp, cab, delay, and reverb. Now we can go back to each block and choose the library. Then we choose a name for it. Let's call this Blocks Test Preset. Hit Enter. Hit Save. Just that easy. Okay, now here's a situation. You're at a venue doing sound check and you have to make changes to your amp settings. Maybe you need to back off the bass, turn up the gain, whatever. Now let's say you use that particular amp and a number of different presets that you'll use during that gig. Do you want to have to go through all of those presets and adjust the amp settings? Oh, hell no. This is where global blocks come in handy. Now you can save eight global blocks per block. Most of the 41 block types do support global blocks. The ones that don't are crossover, 
IR player, looper, mega tap, MIDI, mixer, multiband comp, multiplexer, real time analyzer, resonator, return, send, synth, 10 tap delay, and vocoder. Now let's say you have presets for, you know, uh, let's just say you have four presets for live use all using the same amp. What you can do is make sure that the amp in question is in the same channel for all the pre same presets. We'll use, let's see here, let's go to the amp block, channel A, and we'll use that Captain Hook 3A. Now go down to where it says global blocks and click where it says unlinked. Click on link and go up to number one, click on it. Now it says linked to G1. Save that preset. Now we go to the next preset that uses that amp. Click on the global block, click on link to and load from. One. Now that's also linked to G1. Save it and do the next for the other two presets. Save it. And the last one. Okay, now we go back to the first preset. And like I said, let's just say that, uh, you know, you want to turn the drive up some. And the bass is way too much in this hall. Mids are a little bit too much too. So now, you save that. Now, see these settings right here? The ones that were changed? Look at preset 392, preset 393, preset 394. You didn't have to go in and change them by hand. They were all changed through the link to the global block. Now you gotta admit, that is a great time saver in live situations. Okay guys, next week I'll be diving into the FC controllers. You don't want to miss this, so make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on.